how to be immortal, a guide. What are your chances of immortality? Well, we've done the math, maths, if you've actually bothered to speak English properly, and the chances are higher than you think. Much higher. In fact, when you hear the results, we guarantee you will go, oh, that's better than I thought. Even though I'd been warned in this introduction that the probability of historic fame would be quite achievable, I'm still surprised how likely it is. Where do I get measured for my statue? How we work it out. The method is simple, to discover your chance of being remembered by history, all that is required is to find out how many humans have ever lived, and divide it by everyone who has ever been remembered. Step one, how many people have ever lived? This is the easy part, humans have been around for about 50,000 years, and despite the fact that most of them, for most of history, haven't been remembered specifically, there are reputable organisations and people who have worked out pretty reliable numbers for total humans ever. According to the US Population Reference Bureau, the best estimate for the total number of people who have ever lived is 107 billion. If, in keeping with the theme under discussion, you would like the same fact, but from someone who is already famous and dead, Arthur C. Clarke arrived at approximately the same number. To give 107 billion some perspective, the UN figure for the total number of humans living now is 7 billion. So, for every person on the globe, including you, there is a ghost parade of 14 people marching behind as you lead humanity into either A, a bright and exciting future, if you happen to be a 19th century liberal historian, or B, the abyss, if you happen to work for the Daily Mail. So we now know how many people there have ever been, now we just need to divide that figure by the number of those people history has bothered to remember. So, how many people have actually been remembered? Step 2. Who? When working out the criteria for who constitutes the historically famous, we don't want to include just the super famous of history, the number of those is small and consists mainly of war criminals, Hitler, Genghis Khan and Bing Crosby being the most notable examples. So, if we widen the search beyond just pure evil and include everyone historians regard as worth mentioning, the numbers, as you would expect, go up significantly. As I am English, I will use the UK as the example. Oxford University Press produces the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography and the total number of entries is 58,664. So that's 58,664 individuals who at least some other people in the UK have bothered to remember. Everyone has a fair chance of an invite to the fame party. I say everyone, I mean by that everyone, as long as the word everyone excludes pretty much all women. If you're a woman, then historically your chances of immortality diminish significantly. According to the dictionary, out of 58,664 entries, only 6,359 are women. Why so few women? We must assume that this is a historic anomaly. And while we have reached a degree of equality now, historically, women didn't have the opportunities for advancement we all share in the 21st century. But I digress. Now we know how many people there have ever been, and how many of them have become historically important, we can do the maths on the probability of you being remembered. The maths. We've established that for every person alive now, there are 14 people that have existed historically. If we use the UK as the example, if the current population of the UK is 62,641,000, World Bank Stats 2011, then we might assume that current population represents 1 15th of the total number of people who have ever lived in the UK. So we might assume that the total number of people within the UK who have lived is 939,615,000 or nearly 1 billion. If we take nearly 1 billion and divide it by the number of historic people, 58,664, it will give us the probable chance of being remembered. And that number is... 16,016. So you have approximately a 1 in 16,000 chance of immortality. That is the equivalent of being the most famous person in a small North Wales seaside resort, which everyone should find a comfortable goal. Women, please note, your chance is a more daunting 1 in 147,761, which is the equivalent of being the most famous person in Oxford. Considering Oxford lays claim to 66 Nobel Prizes, 66 more than North Wales seaside town, this might be more of a stretch. The conclusion? If you're seeking immortality, move to Bangor. <laughs>